Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV. And on this episode, we're gonna be building this awesome shop sign and we're gonna do it using the S1 by Xtool. Now, if you're interested in the unboxing and setup of the S1, we have that in a different video. I'll have that linked here and also down in the description. But if you wanna see how we made this awesome shop sign, please stick around for this video. Let's get started. All right, now this is actually the piece of wood that we decided to use for the background of the sign. It's a little different, I think. Most people would probably choose a smooth plywood. I really like the idea of having the contrast, you know, from a smooth finish front part of the sign up against this sort of busy background. Now this one is about a half of an inch thick. So by the time we put the border onto it, it's gonna be almost one inch. And then we'll have the letters and the shape of the logo. We'll obviously need to cut this to be the shape of the logo. All right, so we started off with some half inch plywood and these are my markings for the test I did with the 20 watt. So you have one pass on three speed, two passes on three speed. With the one pass, it just was only getting about halfway through. This one, a little bit further. Three passes on three speed and then I actually dropped the focal point down and I was able to get this one through but I had to forcibly pop it out of this one so still not ideal. And then on this one, we amped it up a little bit more. I think I did one extra pass and it did fall out a lot easier, but what happened was, is it started to just char the plywood pretty bad and that's definitely not what you want. So after a couple coats of paint and just trying to mess with this, I sort of decided, you know what? I wasn't too happy, we're gonna change it up. So these are three quarter inch cedar. It actually cut through this in two passes. Even with that, the charring was pretty severe. As much as I liked this, the process of using these planks would be really difficult. So what does all this mean? It means that ultimately none of this stuff was what I decided to go with, with the 20 watt and this piece of wood right here is actually the one that we want to use. So here is the tag for the plywood that we ultimately used. If you're interested in picking up the same one, I believe we got this one from Lowe's. Now the actual opening inside the X tool for this space is a little bit bigger than the honeycomb panel. So left to right, we're at 22 and a quarter. Front to back, we're about 15 inches. Now a quick note on an alternative, X tool sells these triangular prisms and these pieces can actually be set underneath a piece to elevate it. So let's say I positioned a couple of these inside of here. This would allow me to elevate the piece and maybe go a little bit further out to the edges if you wanted to. Now quick note here, you would wanna cut this piece of plywood to fit inside of the workable area of your specific laser. Remember this is for the Xtool S1 footprint that I'm using specifically. Now to make the cuts, I'm gonna be using my Bosch cordless circular saw. This one is their 18 volt. And for the blade, I've got a seven and a quarter inch plywood blade. This is by Freud. I'll have a link down in the description for the blade as well as for the saw. Now, one quick note is for the blade depth, I want it to be just thicker than the thickness of the plywood so that I'm not just blasting through these old doors that I'm using for my platform. Now, if I wanted to be super precise, I could use a straight edge here to make this cut. But remember, I'm just gonna be cutting the letters out of this for the sign. This cut, it's not super important that it's absolutely straight. So we're just gonna freehand cut this way, this way, and then use this piece to make a copy because we're gonna need two of these in order to cut out everything we need for the sign. So you take those nifty pieces of wood that you just cut and they fit right in here. Now this is the exact shape that the honeycomb panel is so it's gonna fit nice and neat. With the riser base, you can raise or lower the height. We have it at the very top setting because this is super thin wood. So now the laser module is gonna be able to get to it just fine. All right, and we had some success there. Because we had it elevated, the piece was able to actually drop out. So the three speed, one pass works really well. All right, so here is the file in Xtools Creative Suite that we're gonna use. A moment ago, I just cut out one of the hexagon shapes just to do the test. Now we've got the full piece of plywood in there. This is one of two sections. I can't fit all the letters that I need from the sign into one file for one area. Now what I did here was each of these are individual layers so that I can set them up to cut accordingly. There are the settings we're gonna use for the cut. Make sure that each of the pieces that you want are set to output and not ignore and then that's it. When you click process, it will show you a preview of what you're gonna do. So if you had any wonderings about what you had included or what you didn't, here's where you would find out. Then you click start. And there we go. All right, the first batch of letters turned out really well. I'm very happy with this. The cuts are clean. Everything looks good. There'll be a little bit of cleanup needed, but not too much. I think everything turned out well. 
I've got the second piece loaded in. I went ahead and checked the depth already. And then for this one, I needed to make an extra layer for the center of the O so that I could tell it to cut this out first with the U and the G. And then once that piece drops in, then I'll go ahead and cut the outside of the O in a second pass on here. Everything has the same settings as last time. So let's cut this one out as well. And now the last part, cut out the outside of the O. All right, we've got them laid out sort of how they would go. The top word tough has kind of an arc at the bottom. These other two words are gonna be just straight. And then we've got the two pieces on the ends. So again, there is the logo. So the last thing I need to create is the frame that's gonna go around the outside. For that, we're gonna use some of that thicker plywood instead of this plywood. So I've got a sheet of this that I've already cut down. So this one here should work for me to cut the perimeter shape. All right, after the first coat of paint, they turned out pretty solid here. I do wanna do a sanding of these before I do a second coat. The O had a little imperfection here, but we were able to sand that off. I'm using this uh, sand net system by Diablo. The top part of the block is actually soft. So if you're doing kind of like a rounded edge, and then this side is a little bit harder. And the cool thing is when these things get filled up, you can just dust them off. One last quick note is I noticed that I actually painted the E on the wrong side. Yeah, so that would have been bad, looks weird. So it actually needs to be like this with the longer portion at the bottom. So I've got to paint this side of it twice again. And then also I did do a wipe down of each of these after I was sanding. As you can see, a lot of that fine dust sort of came off and I wanted to get as much of that off as I could. Well, after the third coat of black paint, we've done a coat of this matte clear, and I probably should have done matte for the black as well. Doesn't really matter, I guess, because we have the matte clear. I was looking for more of a matte finish. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think the finish looks okay. The cut was actually really clean with the laser too, which obviously helps everything. And here is that backer board we're gonna be using. This is gonna be the background of the sign. So if we use this little sample that I made as an example of what we're gonna do, this stuff will be this dark section and our black pieces here that we've created are going to be the lighter tones. All right, so before we lay out this and we start cutting everything, I wanted to show what the process is. What am I doing to figure this out? I made a center line mark very lightly with a pencil right in the middle. First thing I'm gonna do is line up the letters across the center line, and then I'm gonna set my spacing here. Generically, I'm just gonna use one inch for the larger letters and for the lower section, so I know my spacing to the left and right. And again, I use the one inch spacing from this ruler. I think this works pretty well for me just to lay this out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a little mark on this side so I know where I can cut it. All right, now to get the correct angle, there's probably a bunch of different ways that somebody could do this. Since I already have this one made and it is exactly the shape that we're trying to go for here, I'm gonna use it to create these angles. I'm just gonna line up the center line on here. I'm gonna use the speed square up against the edge of the plywood, and then I'm gonna use this to mark these two lines. If you do have one of these, you can adjust it and get it lined up with where the angle actually is. As you can see, it's not quite 50 degrees, but I can use this to help me create the correct angle on the wood as well. Now I could take a straight edge and mark across here and make sure I've got this cut correct and then just repeat this four times so I have all four corners. We have the shape marked. Now I need to cut off the excess on this side, just drop that off and then I'll be able to make the ankle cuts. We're going to set up here to use the circular saw next for that. Shameless self-plug. If you are interested in what we have going on, then come check us out on social media at Tough Guys TV everywhere. Yeah. Okay, we've got our shape for the outside edge. Now I can map out that one inch border around the perimeter. For the plywood that we're going to be using on the outside frame, this is half inch thick. And we're just going to be cutting some one inch wide strips. 
start assembling this frame, what I have is those one inch pieces that I cut on the table saw, long enough to where no matter where I put them, they overhung with plenty of excess. Now I started off by just getting the actual angle because I wanted to test if I could do like a mitered corner here essentially. So put that down and we just extend it out to the side all the way to the edge right here flush and then we just run the next piece all the way into it you can see the piece flows into the other piece and then over here on this side we'll essentially do the same thing so i went ahead and traced that one inch line all the way around and here is the miter saw we're going to be using this is my new cordless miter from bosch once i figured out where it needed to be i put a piece of tape here to just mark exactly where it needed to go now you would need to adjust your miter if you're making different angles here, so just keep that in mind. All right, we're gonna get this frame part sanded out, and for that, we're gonna be using our Surf Prep sander. Surf Prep is a great choice if you're trying to step up your game. This is not sponsored or anything like that, so it's just uh, the best sander that I've ever used in my life. On here, I have a 100 grit, and I have it hooked up to my vacuum to keep the dust down. All the vibration is happening down here, so it's not passing into your hands. And an extra note there on this sander, it's the only one my son will use because it doesn't vibrate his hands so bad, so keep that in mind. All right, so we've got these laid out around the outside where they're gonna go, and since I need to paint them all, I'm going to mark them on the back so I know where they go, just in case any of these don't fit back, like if I swap these two or I swap these two, maybe they don't work right, so. I'm just gonna flip them over one at a time and mark them. All right, so I elevated the sign up onto a box that I found in the shop, just had some room underneath it, because I want to try to clamp down these frame pieces. Now the finish on the frame actually turned out kind of interesting. I wasn't trying to make it have like a rustic look, but because we didn't sand all the way down on the plywood, and then we applied the satin paint and then the matte finish coat, it actually looks kind of cool. I did try to leave these ends unpainted so that when I glue everything together, it'll be a little bit easier to do so. So we've got our clamps out here. I think what I'm gonna do is, I was originally gonna try to clamp each of these little corner segments, but I think a better plan is gonna be to maybe clamp some additional pieces of wood over each part as I hold it down to glue it. I just do not want any fasteners through the face or from the backside or anything like that. Here's the glue I'm gonna use. This is Type Bond 3. It is waterproof exterior. I don't think that I'm gonna have this thing outside, but I am gonna put a clear finish over the entire outside of it. Maybe I do end up hanging it outside the shop or something. So I just wanna use this glue to be safe on this side. And with the glue in place, I grabbed each of the trim pieces for the frame and put them in place just with some light pressure to hold them down until we could get the clamps ready, which is coming up next. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clamp each of these sections. I'm using like a shop cloth here to put in between them. That's probably a better way, but I didn't really think it through before I started putting the glue. So basically we just moved around the perimeter of the sign and I applied each clamp with the tiny bit of that construction cloth napkin, you could say. I just wanted to make sure that I had it clamped down nicely and that the clamps weren't messing up the wood. And ultimately I did end up having to re-sand all of the frame down because that finish that I thought I liked earlier, spoiler alert, I didn't like it. Well, I think it turned out pretty good overall. It's not the exact finish that I was going for, but I think it's good enough. It's gonna be hanging up on the wall here in the shop. So now I need to lay the letters out on here, get them where I want them to be, and then glue them down one by one so that everything is perfect. That'll be our last step. Well, we've got them laid out. I'm gonna put my tape on here to make sure that everything is lined up where it should be. But overall, that is about how it's gonna go. So once I get these set up and laid out, this is the product that we're gonna be using. So this stuff here from Gorilla Grip or Gorilla Adhesive, this is contact adhesive. It's a clear product. It cures in about one day, but it is from testing that I've done, it adheres almost immediately. So the plan here is to basically take it, put some on the back of each of these, stick it down in place and it will hold. If you remember this little test piece we made, I actually glued it to the front of this workbench. I did not clamp this in any way. I just stuck it on here with some of that stuff. It's not going anywhere, so I think it's gonna work. Now to get the letters where I wanted them to go, I used some blue painter's tape combined with my little ruler here. This thing has two sides. One is one inch, one is one half inch, and this worked pretty good for laying out the spacing overall. 
the glue that we were using, this Gorilla Glue, we're basically just gonna lift up each letter. We're gonna put some on the back of each one and then set them down, put some pressure and let them cure. I started by applying this to these little end shapes, the bolt head shapes. Now, when I went over to the other side and I started to apply the glue, the bottom of the bottle actually bursted out and the glue spilled all over the H and a bunch of the backer panel, which I then had to fix, live and learn. So to continue on, once I got everything cleaned up and I had the H repainted and sitting outside drying, the same process applied here. Just take some of the adhesive, place it on the back of each letter, and then press it down onto the backer board. I did apply some pressure, just enough to where I could feel that the stuff was starting to tack up and hold. It does rapidly make the connection, but it does take about one day to cure. Now once the H was totally ready to go, I brought it back inside and then applied the adhesive onto the back of it. In this case, I just used the giant hole that blew open the bottom of this bottle of this uh, Gorilla Glue stuff. Once I was finished using it here, I promptly threw it in the trash because let's see, I'm not gonna try to use it again when it's already failed me so miserably one time. Now, once I had a chance to sit overnight, I thought that it was time for the final reveal. Overall, I think the sign turned out great. I hope that this serves as an inspiration if you're gonna be building a sign in your shop. Hopefully there's a nugget of information in here for you. Obviously, you're probably not gonna be building a Tough Guys TV sign for your shop. But again, thanks for coming to the channel. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or concerns or just general feedback and looking forward to seeing you in the next video.